OK, uh, so this lab, we will see that how we can use SQL uh, to make queries and also to modify the tables um, and also data in a relational database. Uh, so we already have created um, those tables from the previous lab. So just as a quick recap, uh, we have four tables. So the, the professor table contains the professor name, um, which we have the P email as a primary key. The course table contains the course information like course number, name, room, and also professor email. So uh, on the course table, the C number, course number is a primary key, and the P email is a foreign key. We also have the student table, which we have student email as a primary key, and also student name, and also major. Um, and finally, because the, the relationship between student and also the course is many to many relationship, so we have to have another table so that to handle those many to many relationship. So specifically on this enroll list, we have the student email and also course key together as the primary key. Uh, student student email is also foreign key that refers to the student email of the student table. And our course number on the, on the enroll list is also another foreign key that refers uh, to the primary key on the course table. OK, so that is a structure of our tables. And again, your, uh, once you have those tables, you, are, you have to create your uh, fill in your data. So here, let's see my table. So my course table, so I have three classes. And they all are taught by myself. I think this is not refreshed. Yeah, so they are all taught by myself. And of course, in the in the in the professor table, there's only one professor, so I am the only one professor. Uh, on the student table, we have um, uh, six uh, students, so three or two from JS major and also four from I major. And in this enroll list. I do have five records, and we can see that student one are taking two classes. Student two is taking one class. Student three is taking two classes. OK, so that is the data we have. Uh, so now, um, in this lab, we are going to answer a few questions. So the first one is that simply that I just want you to display all the records in the student table. So uh, it's very easy to do that, actually, by default, in post GR circle, so in page admin, if you are using page admin, uh, you can just right click the table name and also you can view all the rows or you can view, you know, um, the first or the last 100 rows. However, so if we are going to write SQL on our own, so what we can do is that we can go to tools and we can open this query tool. And now you can see now uh, you can edit uh, those queries. Okay. Um, and also, in a, in post -jr circle, so in this database, uh, we have multiple schemas. Uh, so schema is a logic container that can can contain multiple tables. So in this case, my schema is called demo, and I do have the other schemas. So make to make sure that we distinguish those different tables in different schemas. So when we call in the tables, we use dot uh, to separate schema and also the table. So for example, here we are going to see we will select everything from and we tell schema demo dot student. OK, so and this is a very simple SQL statement. So that is basically that I will, we will select everything from this table. Specifically, that is in demo schema dot student table. And now if we run this SQL, so we can see here beneath we have all the records that have been returned. OK. Uh, so that's very pretty simple. And the next question is that find out which course has the greatest number of students being in enrolled. OK, and also I want you to print out the course number and also number of enrolled students just for the most enrolled class only. OK, so that is a question. So so now you have to think about, OK, so which table or which tables can answer that question. So which table or which tables do have those enroll information? So actually, we have this one. So if you look at the enroll list uh, table, we can see that for this class 
here we, we only have uh, five records, so it is easy to tell that I340 is the one that has uh, the most number of students enrolled because it has three students enrolled. But how can we do that by using SQL? So, um, okay, so let's go back to our editing query. So here, um, let's see that we select everything from enroll list and let's run it and looks like this table has everything that we need so we just need to count that for each cost number that how many students being enrolled okay so that actually we can use the group function okay so what we can do is that we can say we can select cost number okay comma and also we can use count which is aggregation function to count the C number, so how many records, how many cost numbers are there as enrolled. So I give the result as a new um, name so that in, in the output table, I'll have two columns. One is cost number and also one is enrolled. Okay, so since I use aggregation functions and also I need to tell that uh, from demo dot enroll list. Okay, since I use count, which is aggregation function, so I have to use a group. So group by, so I want group by the cost number. Okay, so let's write first. Okay, great. Now we have those two results. We can see I340 have uh, three enrolled and also uh, I GOG2 uh, 15 has two enrolled. Okay, so the number of records for the cost numbers equals the number of different students enrolled. So now we want to get the most enrolled students, uh, enrolled class. So we can use a sort function or order function. Let's say order by enrolled. Okay, and also we can define the sequence. So let's say we want to use descending. Okay. Actually, there's nothing changed because it al it's already used descending. Uh, but however, I just want the, the top one. So we, we can use limit one. Okay, so now we have our results. Okay, so I340, so the most enrolled class. Okay, the next is that question is that display all the professor name names and also corresponding courses that they teach. Okay, uh, so let's look at the cost table first. Okay, so now we have all the courses and also we link that to professor tables by using the P email. However, this table does not have the professor's name. That is because we want to reduce the data redundancy. So we put the professor names into a separate table. But sometimes we may also want to find out uh, the, the instructor of each uh, course name, so especially we want to know the name, okay? So in that case, we need to join those two tables together. And if you remember that, specifically we need to join based on the foreign keys to their, to their corresponding uh, primary keys. So that is P email on course table and also P email on the professor table. Okay, uh, so let's do that. So let's go back to the active uh, editors okay so let's say we want to select okay the demo dot professor dot p name so here because we are joining two tables together so in addition to tell the schema name we also need to tell table name because now we are working on multiple tables so more than one table so schema dot table dot column so we want to select the p name and also demo dot cost name so that is in the cost table okay and we want to see that from so here we can actually um we want to use the inner join okay so that's why we want to select both from demo dot Professor in drawing demo dot cost. 
OK, uh, so you can switch the order uh, in this case because we are using inner drawing. However, if you are using left drawing or right drawing, then in that case, the order uh, will will make a difference. So if you're using different orders, that will be make, make, will make a difference. But here we are using inner drawing, so that should be fine. And here we have to tell the common case. So we see that drawing based on demo dot professor dot p email in cost demo dot cost dot p email. OK, uh, so hopefully I don't have any type. Oh, I do have one. OK, uh, let's draw it. OK, so that's pretty nice. You see here, um, all I am the only instructors uh, for all the, all the three courses. Um, OK, that's nice. Um, however, uh, so that answered uh, this question. OK, the so number four is asking that I want to find out which professor teaches the greatest number of the course. Print the professor name and also the course number. OK, this is similar to our previous question, the question two. So uh, if we just want to know that which professor teaches the most number of courses, we can simply go to the course table. And also, we use a group by function and also the count aggregation function. So we all know that which professor teaches the most number of the courses. However, here I also want you to print out the professor's name, which does not exist on the course table. So to answer these questions, we still need to join two tables together. Uh, so remember that right now we have this after we run this one. So we have this temporal result. OK, and we can treat this temporary result as a table. OK. So um, based on that, we can also continue to make further queries. So after we join two tables together, we can make other queries based on that joint table. OK, so let's see how to do that. So let's say that again, we select the cost names. And also here, we are going to see we count. The, we are selecting professor names, and also we are count the cost names as Let's call it a uh, teaching number from professor in the drawing uh, this one and also everything will be the same. Um, but here we all we just need to add group by group by uh, let's just copy this one. OK, so logically, we just treat this table and this joint result as a table. So um, actually, so when you join some table together, if you are going to use that tables a lot, you can create a view. OK, so creating view will make those easier. OK, so now let's see well it working out. So we select professor name and also we just directly apply on the count function on this course name. OK, and uh, based on this joint table and also we also specify that group by okay so now let's run it okay nice so now we know that okay so uh, because I, I am the only professor so that's why that uh, there's only one result being returned and also I'm teaching three classes uh, so if you have if you do have multiple professors you can still continue like order by uh, teaching numbers descending and also limit one okay so by doing that you will just you will be able to find out the only one the top professor that teach the most number of the classes okay uh, so next uh, so next question is saying that we will have a new professor that will join our uh, university and also that professor will also uh, teach a new course. OK, so a new professor will join this university and also that professor will also teach a, thing, a new course. So uh, we want to insert the professor record and also the course record to their corresponding uh, tables. So uh, we can use the insert 
uh, SQL code to do that. However, here there is a tricky part. So the relationship between professor and also course is a one-to-many relationship. So should we insert professor first or should we insert the course first? We know that on the course table, P email is a foreign key. So if we insert a new course first, then for that new course, there's no foreign key. There's no prime key on the professor table that can refer to that foreign key you're talking about. So that is the reason that we have to insert the professor first, and the next we can insert that new, new course. OK, one more time. So because the relationship between professor and the course is one to, one to many relationship, so that means if you want to have a new course that in the right that record to be saved, you have to have that professor's record to be saved first. Okay, so that's why that we have to insert, we have to modify the professor table first, and after that we can update our, our, and modify the course table. Okay, so now let's uh, go back to our editor and let's use the insert function. So insert into. And again, we're going to tell the uh, table names that is demo dot professor. And we have to specify that the columns that uh, we are going to insert. So that is P email, P name, so professor name, and also office. And next, we are going to tell the values. Okay. And make sure that we are following the same order here. So the first value will go to the P email. The second value will go to the P name, and also the third value will go to a P office. Okay, so let's see the first name, uh, email. So let's see the it is a new professor email at gmu.edu, and the P name. So let's just call it new professor and office. Uh, let's just call it new office okay okay so let's say insert into so p email we go to p email uh new p well as a, the professor name and also office will go to new office and also remember that p email is a primary key so that you uh, if you have already have a professor that have this email you will have error so that you have make sure that uh, p email is unique okay so now let's run it it's that success and uh, let's check so select everything from demo dot professor okay so now we can see the new professor now has been added okay so now we have this professor so let's now we can insert a new course that is taught by this new professor so let's say insert into um, demo dot cost and the cost requires a cost number cost name um, the room of the class and also the professor email okay and the values again we, we are going to follow the same um, orders so for the cost name let's call it that is a GS new so that is a new uh, GS class and the cost name um, let's just call it new GS name okay and the classroom so that will be online okay and also P email okay so this is the where why we need the P the professor new professor uh, record first Otherwise, the foreign key, um, you, you must to have a foreign key on this table, a value for this foreign key. So let's see, that will be our new professor's email. OK, again, they should follow the same order. So uh, cost number is GS new, um, cost name is GS new GS name, and also room is online, and also professor email is the email of the new professor. And now let's right and a success and let's also select check that one from demo dot course 
OK, so now we can say we have a new course that is now being teaching, being taught by this new professor. OK, so that is uh, finished. OK, our last question is that, so suppose that there is an and professor that will retire and also the new professor will teach all the retired professors course. OK, um, so let's say that I am going to retire next year and also this new professor will teach all my classes. So what we want to do is that we want to delete uh, the, that retiring professor's records from the professor table. We also want to update that all the courses will, is now being taught by this new professor. OK, uh, so we need to change two tables. And here we have the same questions. So which table should we modify first? And again, if we go back to this one, so if we delete a professor first, and there will be some records, there will be some courses that their foreign keys will not will be empty, which is not allowed. Okay, so if we delete a professor who is currently teaching any courses, and that behavior is that action is not allowed. So the right order is that we have to modify the cost table uh, so that we have make sure that the professor my uh, my email, so my record, I am not teaching any courses right now. And after we are making, making, we are uh, making sure that the professor, the professor that is going to be retired, is not actively teaching any courses. And then we can delete that professor's record. Okay, so that we are also make sure that our data are consistent and also integrity. OK, so let's do that. So first, let's delete the cost table. Or let's change the cost table. See that we want to see that all the professors that are teaching by this email will now be replaced by this email. OK, so that actually it can be done by using an update function. So let's update demo dot cost. And here we see set p email equals new professor's email. OK, so we set p emails to this new professor email. And don't forget this where clause. So if you don't have the where clause, all the records will be updated. OK, uh, let's see where the p email is my email. OK. Because I am going to retire, I'm retired soon, and also I want this new professor to teach all my classes. So I set the new value for the professor columns to be the, the email of the new professor, only for those records where the current existing P email value is my email. OK, uh, so now let's run it. And we can see it was success. We have updated three records. But let's check it. So select everything from demo dot cost and let's run it. OK, great. OK, so now we can see that all the courses are now being taught by this new professor. So now we can safely delete uh, the retiring professor. So let's delete from demo dot Professor. OK, again, don't forget the where clause. So if you forgot the where clause, all the records will be deleted. So we see where the P email equals my email. OK, because right now the cost table does not have any email that is uh, any cost that is related to this email so now we can safely delete um, this professor's record so let's do that and we can see we deleted one and now let's select everything from demo dot uh, professor and let's see whether or not that is what we want okay great so now you can see uh, we only have the new professor